Hi, Mike here, and I want to talk to you about Boozy Jerky. You might have heard Big Ray and I talk about Boozy Jerky on the podcast or seen us post about it on our social media. Boozy Jerky is beef jerky infused with craft beer, and they have a variety of great flavors that you can get shipped directly to you. They've been awesome enough to give us a discount code to pass along to you and whoever you want to pass it along to after that. What you need to do is go to boozyjerky.com, pick out all the different beef jerky you want, add it to your cart. When you go to checkout, you use the code CBBL22. Again, that's CBBL22. And that's going to get you 10% off your entire order. And then you get craft beer infused beef jerky shipped directly to you. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Craft Beer Bucket with Big Ray and Mike, where we review beers you have to try before you die. And hey, everybody, thank you so much for hanging out with us yet again. You got me, Big Ray, and we got Mike. And you know what? You're listening to Craft Beer Bucket List. And you're awesome for that. You're a good person. People like you. I like you. I think Mike could like you. Mike, do you like them for listening? Uh, Bitty fitty. Fitty fitty. Fair enough. So 60% of the time, it works all the time. I like your math. So what's going down? I was just thinking about this song. It's not the song I'm going to pick, but um, okay. I've got another Texas beer in front of me. You've heard that song by uh, Gary P. Nunn. You asked me what I like about Texas. Oh, yeah. You asked me what I like about Texas. Sure. It's I tell a, you, it's a wide open space. Anyway, I was thinking about that. Beyond that, I've got another Texas beer in front of me out of Fort Worth. I'm excited to drink it. Ooh. And I'm thirsty. So, you know. Same. Excitement to have a beer, the thirst to have a beer, and, uh, you know, the emotions and the anticipation are building up. So we better get to business. There, it's building up? Like, whoa. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going. It's like the beer's talking to me. Hey, Mac, I think I will be delicious. Please come help me out by drinking me till I'm gone. And that's like my old, like, <laughs> soldier voice or something. I don't know. It's, <laughs> I don't know. Did you ever see Christopher Walken do Colonel Angus on SNL? Oh, my gosh, yes. That's what I just thought of when I was yes. doing it. I was like, <laughs> oh, my God, I sound like Colonel Angus. Like, oh, man, that old carpet bagger. Anyway. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So this beer is calling my name, sir. Well. Saying. Dear Mike, please come forth and crack the can, and therefore your lips will touch the opening, and you shall let flow the golden essence of God's elixir so that it flows into your belly and makes you happy and jolly. I should write that into a poem. You should absolutely do that. But Mike, you know, I want to mix things up just a little bit tonight. No, oh, okay. The sticker sponsor. Huh? I want you to tell us who the sticker sponsor is. Oh, we have a sticker sponsor. Yeah, like, you know, why don't you do it this time? I d I've done it like the last 50 episodes. I know, you're so good at it. Okay. Uh, hey, everybody. Anyway. Can you believe that Craft Beer Bucket List has a sticker sponsor? Yes, it's true, and it's exciting. You two can get some stickers, free, free stickers, y'all, just by going on our social media. That's on Instagram and Facebook. And telling us, hey, we want to get that sticker. But I'm sure you're wondering, what sticker are we going to get, Mike? And I can tell you, it's a sticker from the Oklahoma Craft Beer Trail. The Oklahoma Craft Brewers Association created the Craft Beer Trail where you get prizes and other things just for visiting multiple breweries in the state. And let me tell you, there's a lot of good breweries in Oklahoma and there's a lot of good beer to be had. Again, message us on Facebook or Instagram and get your Oklahoma Craft Beer Trail sticker now. Thank you. That just totally blew my mind. Like that, that was like that a was perfect. Like, that was like a. I was trying to do like the infomercial thing. Did I do a good job? I think you did a fan. I think from now oh, on, man. you should do it from now on. 
I don't That's know, what man. I think. I think you just got a new job. You, uh, you've been promoted, uh, man. Man, oh, man, oh, man. Promoted. Okay, see, if I get promoted, are you demoted? No, you just get up to my level. Okay, fair enough. Oh! No, I mean, I'll take it. That, that's a, <laughs> I'm still a compliment. <laughs> oh, I've been You're trying to get me down for a long time. You're not putting me down. You're lifting me up. That's, that's right. All right, so can I talk about my beer, too? Yes, you may. By all means, all right. good sir. Yeah. Yeah. So folks, I'm, I'm excited about this. I have not had this beer, um, but I was given this beer by a friend. Um, it's the Billy Jenkins Bach from Wild Acre Brewing Company. And Wild Acre is out of Fort Worth, Texas. Um, so I'm pretty stoked about this. Boom, boom, boom. Ray, what is your beer? So I'm. this is going to be a first drink for me. Um, but I've got a beer from the Big Storm Brewing Company out of Tampa Bay, Florida. And I'm going to be checking out one of their year-round offerings, the Wave Maker Amber Ale. Yeah. So crack it, sir. You go first. All right. Here we go. All right. Uno dos tres. How was that? Oh, it's pretty good. I was about to go, but you you you're like, how's that? It's pretty good. It sounded good. You ready okay, for this? Go. Yeah. One, I'm ready for it. A one, a two, a one, two, three. Dang. Did that sound great or what? That sounded amazing. All right, sir. I'm about to take a good old drink of this beer. Oh, okay. Mm. So I, I had a I had a Bach beer in a previous episode, and now I'm drinking this Bach, and I can I can I can say I, I'm already going to like this one just a little bit better. The body is a little bit lighter, less less is uh, less thick on the tongue. Oh yeah, yeah. The flavors are the flavor profile is a little different too, but it's the body that's going to make it make it score a little higher in my book. All right, sir. What, so, what are you drinking again? So, I've got an amber ale. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me just try that again. I got an amber ale from the Big Storm Brewing Company out of Tampa, Florida. I, I mean, if I'm going to be Clearwater, Florida, Clearwater, yeah. Which is, you know, the Tampa Bay or the Tampa, you know, metro area. It's across from Clearwater is across the bay, the Tampa Bay from the city of Tampa. Yeah. I'm sure I'm going to get some Floridians to correct me if I didn't. Excuse me, oh. say that right. I think you're going to be all right. Ooh, I, I just let out such a huge burp. Hopefully I muted before that all just came out. <laughs> oh, dude, I heard all of it. I heard all oh, of it. Oh, gosh. Oh my. oh, my. No, I'm just, I'm just pulling your chain, dude. I didn't hear it. Oh, whew. okay. So I was trying to be <laughs> polite to the listeners. Um, uh, yeah. It kept they me from speaking expected. correctly for a minute. It was like, oh, I was trying to talk. I'm like, there's this burp coming. Oh, my gosh. Ah, I think you're fine. I mean, I think I mean, when, you got, when you got a couple of guys drinking beers, I think you kind of expect a little burp here and there, right? It's going to happen. Yeah. It's going to happen. So I mean I don't know, um, man. So how's your beer? So it's it's pretty good overall. Yeah, no, it's an pretty American good. amber. It's pretty good. So it's not. This isn't an American amber. Is not typically a style I gravitate towards. But given what we do, we drink all styles, right? And yeah. given that not all styles are going to speak to our taste, bros. Now, just like I'm an IPA guy, I'm a hophead. I probably said hophead 2,000 times in the, in the years <laughs> we've been doing this. And I know yeah. you're not an IPA guy, but you drink them anyway, right? Sure, yeah. So we're, I believe that that this beer is is true to the style uh, for an amber ale. It's it's It doesn't taste bad at all. It tastes good. It's just not what I typically go for. Okay. So overall, like I said, it's, it's pretty good so far. Um, it's, it's a crisp beer. It's a low ABV. It's 5.4%. Uh, so it's going to be an easy drinking beer, but it's got some, I don't know what, there's a word I'm looking for here, Mike. 
I would say there's like a like a caramel or a toffee. There's like something. There's something in this, like an extra little sweet note. And maybe that's okay. what's just throwing me off a bit. It's not necessarily bad, but right. it's there. And it's like, what what is that? Um, so it maybe maybe that's what it is. Okay. So not a bad thing. It's just different. Um, so I'm I'm saying all these words to say I don't know what I'm trying to say exactly, Mike. Just talking in circles here, dang it. <laughs> it's, 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 uh, but, it's your beer. You can say what you want. Yeah, but there's just this extra little sweet thing in here. Like, what? Ah, I don't know. I don't know if it's okay. caramel or toffee. Some, something like that. Something like that. And, uh, like I said, not not horrible or, or, or toffee. Some, I don't know, dude. But there's something okay. in here, and it's, uh, it's just a little thing. Okay. Well, I mean, uh, we all have our opinions. Absolutely right. right. Yeah. No, sure. I and mean, that's what we do, right? We we drink beer most of the time. It's beer we've never seen, and we're giving our uh, our thoughts on our first drink. You know, a lot of times we bring on beer that we know we love, and we want to share that with our community. Um, but when you try something for the first time, it's like, well, first impression. This is what it tastes like to me. So the Billy Jenkins Bach um has a has a pretty good bread fla- bread flavors about it it's got some toffiness about it i'm getting a little bit like a like a toasty biscuity kind of flavors um the maltiness um is there but like not as heavy as i've had in a couple of more recent beers so the malt the malts have dialed back a little bit and so is that like molasses sweetness you know kind of it dialed back a little bit the body, um, to, so it's it's funny because it sits a little heavier me, but it doesn't feel as thick. Um, so I would still say it's probably in the in the medium bodied range for me, um, but it, it's it's not a problem. It's it's a good beer with in, in that regard. It feels pretty pretty good on the tongue. It's got you know a little bit of creaminess on the tongue. Um, I do like it's not as carbonated as I was w- was not hoping for, but thinking it would be. But I think that helps it out, right? Um, so when you think about like a typical, when you think about a Bach beer, what do you think about a Bach beer? Man, usually something like a malt, very malt forward, medium bodied. But you think of like Shiner um, Bach, right? Oh, I would like to do a flavor profile, but no, oh, you, yeah. it's like the in, for us, you know, in the. In the the mid south, like you hear yeah. Bach uh, straight to Shiner, dude. Yeah. It's- so Shiner Bach is kind of like the, the the benchmark, right? I think I'm with this, you. that makes sense. Yeah, I think this the flavor profile here is going to be like, and I like Shiner Bach, and I had one just the other day. I was out having some beers, um, and I had two or three of them. Three of them, heck, I think two or three, whatever. Um, but I like them, right? I like, I like the, I like the beer. I like the flavor. Um, it, it just tastes good and it, it it's, it's tasted good forever. But that's the, that for me, that's the bench. That's how I kind of, that's my frame of reference. I think this beer okay. is very similar in body and, uh, you know, mouthfeel and all that. I think the flavor profile here is a little bit more nuanced. Um, and I think that, uh, this could probably be pretty competitive, or maybe even notch above like a, a Shiner Bach. Um, however, you know, you got to compete with history and, you know, cultural aspects, but so I think it's in, I think it's in that realm, right? It's good. It's, it's really good. Um, you know, it, it's, it's at 5.2%. So this is, you know, getting, you know, since it's kind of lower, I think you could have uh, you know, this is another beer that I would say this you could take places with you and share and people would enjoy it. You can take a sixer with you and, um, to a tailgate. And at the end of the, the game, you'll be fine. Well, there you go. So that, that's kind of my review of it. And, and, uh, I don't, I probably should know who Billy Jenkins is, but uh, I do not on the can. It looks like he's like a old civil war general, which is kind of like where I got my initial, accent from or whatnot my impersonation but it's got a train in the background blowing some blowing some smoke 
kind of looks like he's out in West Texas, actually, the landscape, because it does not look like what I would say Fort Worth looks like. Yeah. Because it kind of kind of looks like a desert aspect of it. But anyway, I like the can art. I think it's it's pretty simple. You can easily tell what beer it is. It's got a the, the color palette and the color schemes and the design aspects are pretty well done. So I just I have to look up who Billy Jenkins is. He's probably somebody I should know. So probably. All right. So tell tell us about tell us about the beer over there. You're drinking the Wave Maker from Big Storm. I am. And you know, again, overall, it's it's a good beer, dude. Like I said, just because it's not something I typically gravitate towards doesn't mean it's bad, right? Um, so I, I think it's very yummy. But it's uh, there was something I was thinking about just earlier, dude. Like, this is a crushable beer, dude. And uh, I had to look it up online. This is a beer that they've been making since 2012, so it's been a staple for a decade. And I think that says a lot about the beer. It says a lot about the brewery, right? They, they found a recipe that works. They got it dialed in. And uh, in looking it up, <clears> or <throat> getting just some more information about the beer, um, it talks that it has some hints of toffee in it. So I totally nailed that. Um, I wasn't sure if it was caramel or toffee, but they, it has hints of toffee. And they, they talk about that in the description. And it's just like, mm, my tongue knows what's up. They can pick out them flavors, Mike. So, but overall, it's malty and smooth. It's a it's a great you know summertime beer. I mean, coming from South Florida, it's hot and humid all the time, and so I think they made a beer that works with their environment, right? Um, that, that's a good thing. So I like it. Very crushable, very sessionable. Um, like this came in a pint can, and so you could have two or three of these and still feel pretty good about life. I think I told you said before the ABV just five point four percent. It was very light, very light beer overall. And I think it's very shareable. You know, this is a good one to take. Another, for me, this is another uh, community beer. Not community, but when you're, uh, what's the word? It's a word when you're hanging out with people. It's your social social beer. When you have a beer, have when you're socializing. So, I like that. And Mike, I think you might have sneezed or something earlier, but you put yourself on mute. You should come off mute so we can hear you. <laughs> uh, no, I tell you what I was doing because uh, <laughs> I was trying to range, rearrange myself in my chair, and it was like making a little too much noise, so I muted myself. Ah, uh, okay. No, no what right. I was saying is I, I don't. Did you, do you have any additional ones of that beer? Because that'd be maybe some I'd like to try. So this is a uh, one I grabbed um, on a recent trip to Florida and brought back with me. I'm sorry, Mike. No, that's all right. I can, I can only so, hope. hope. Say, hey, I just like literally just flew home from Salt Lake City yesterday, and I've got a handful of beers to give you. I don't know if I've told you that yet or not. So I do have some beers for you, Mike. Just I don't have another one of this one. Sorry, man. I'll, no, it's all right. I'll forgive you. Um, Thank you for being so, so, <laughs> so forgiving. Yeah. You're so magnanimous. So let's, I know, you know what? There's nothing but love for me to you. Aw, heart. <laughs> so we... Heart yeah, hands. hard hands. My terrible hard hands. Yeah, what, what the hell is going on over there? I don't know. Um, I'm trying to make hard hands. Yeah. I think we need to wrap this episode up. Yeah. Um, let's do it. Let, you want to go first or second? Um, I want to go first. Okay. So over the more I drink this beer, the more it grew on me. At first, it's like, this is not what I want. Um, but the more I drank it, the more I liked it. It really spoke to my taste bros. Um, the sweetness I got at first was a bit much, but again, as I drank it, I kind of got used to it. It grew on me. So I was going to start out giving this beer like a six and a half. Like I was just like not feeling it. Um, but the more, again, the more I drank it, it's like, you know what? This is actually pretty darn good. Now, so I'm going to give it a 7.5 out of 10. A uh, still very respectable score. It's absolutely got a home on our craft beer bucket list. But it got me thinking of a, a song that, uh, that I like to hear. I, I don't know, dude, but I like the song Cake by the Ocean. And I had to look up the band, and I, I think it's called Dance, but it's D N C E. I'm too old okay. to be trendy to keep up with band names, but it's spelled D N C E. I'm assuming it's Dance. Okay. But the song is "Cake by the Ocean." It's just a fun song. I mean, this being a beer from the from the Gulf Coast, it all just kind of fits. Right. All right. At least for me. Yeah. And uh, that was uh, the, um, but it was by Big Storm Brewing. Is the Wave Maker? It's an Amber Ale. Yeah. That is correct. You got yeah. it, bud. So uh, I had the Billy Jenkins Bach from Wild Acre Brewing out of Fort Worth, Texas. 
I'm going to give this beer an eight out of 10. Uh, I go. think it's a, I think it's a really good representation of what the style should be about. I think it tastes good. I think it's a beer you can share or a beer you can have a sixer of and enjoy. Um, I think it's got, uh, I think it's got a lot going for it. So it's going to get an eight out of 10 for me. And because it's from Fort Worth, Texas, um, the song that stuck in my head or popped in my head is a song by Willie Nelson called beautiful Texas. Um, so, you know, last episode and this episode, both I've got some Texas theme going on here and that's okay. Uh, Ray, we had two beers that we tried. Both are should go on your crap or your bucket list. Both are beers you have to try before you die. And, uh, I think that's it. I'll let you take us out. Absolutely. So man, yet another solid lineup. We do it episode after episode. It's almost like we know what we're doing, Mike. I like it. Obviously, our listeners like it. We have we have a we have a lot of listeners, man, all over the world. I think it's freaking cool, dude. I think it's so cool. I just every time I talk about it, I get a little excited, or a lot excited. But in any case, and be sure to check out the brewery's homepages and their social medias. You can show them some love from wherever you are in the world. Be sure to check us out on social media as well. If you're not already following us on Instagram or Facebook, go ahead and like that or smash that like button. You know, give us a follow. Be our friend. Tag us in whatever beer you're drinking. We love to see what y'all are having, too. And uh, you know what? I say to every episode, man, please don't drink and drive. Y'all know better. You know better. We're all adults. We're all responsible people. Let's let's set the example for everybody else, man. We can do that. And uh, also, uh, drink local. You can help us all that. You can help us all out with that, too. And I'm done talking. Thank you, everybody, so much. And we will see you all in the next episode of Craft Beer Bucket List. Adios. Craft Beer Bucket List is partially supported by Red Dirt LLC. Red Dirt is a parks, recreation, and tourism services agency with the goal to provide the tools, information, and leadership to help guide, plan, and market your organization or business. Red Dirt provides media management, photography and videography, research and analysis, and overall management for excursions and experiences for your agency. Visit reddirt.us.